Is Cole Komet a top three tight end? See, it, like, hold on, hold on a minute, hold on a minute. I'll say no. I, he's cracking his way more and more up the list, though. He's for sure cracking his way more and more up the list. I mean, I don't even know exactly how to rank him right now. I, I, if I started doing it on the side, I'll just take up too much time and I'll start. We'll start rambling. I'll, I'll look it up. Keep talking but, about but, it. But yeah, I think. But here's my thing: the catches that he made this game, and especially the first. I mean, we know the one over Tyron Matthew. I mean, he. he side note: uh, from a matchup standpoint, uh, Dennis, I don't know how having a five nine guy and a six six guy is ever a play. I don't know. What, I don't really know what was going on with that. Have Jordan Howden in on those specific moments. Have, if we're gonna, if we're gonna go one on one, have Jordan Howden in there. Anyways, but yeah, entire Matthew, he bagged him, and he. But Cole Komet, great blocker, good route runner, good hands. Cole Komet's definitely making his way up the list, and he's consistent. And I said this was one of my nerves when the contract got signed. There was a lot of people saying it was an overpay. No. Especially the way tight ends are starting to get paid and the way tight ends produce for offenses. If you have one of them, you got to take care of them. Especially because how much dirty work they do. You got to you got to let them know that you appreciate them. Yeah, no. I mean, Cole Komet right now, he is only at 374 yards, but I believe he is second in touchdowns this year. Does that sound right to you? I mean, that's what it's showing me. Yeah. He's right behind Mark Andrews ahead of Travis Kelsey. Um it was he, the red zone breakout, like we were calling. Yeah, he, he is really a target in the red zone, and it's not even just when they're like at the goal line. Like he can go up and get it. He's not gonna like destroy you, like in terms of like his skill. But he's physical enough where he'll get he'll get the ball and he'll bring it down over a smaller defender. Oh, absolutely. He's got a humongous frame. That's why that's why I loved him so much when you guys took him. Like, uh, correct me here if I'm wrong. What, um, I actually I'll just ask you straight because I always mix it up. What round did you guys get? In? I believe it was the second. I'll round. I'll say second round. I remember he was potential first round, like type of talent. Yeah, I think you guys got him for great value, and as such, you paid him with great value. Bears fans got a good one for sure. So the guy throwing him the ball started off pretty good to commit. He started off scaring me a little bit. Scaring you how? Because I was like, damn, is he really about to cook us like this? Damn, getting cooked by a D two quarterback. I mean, that guy Josh McDaniels fired. We're gonna we'll save this for well, I'm saving my I'll save my banter for later, but no I mean it, that's why like I was scared I genuinely scared that like side side note you know I got to give him his love. Bajan is a gamer like he he definitely makes plays. Yeah, I think what gets him in trouble is again he just he doesn't have the physical tools to be able to make some of the throws that he tries to make in the time he makes. Like he'll see something that would have worked if he had a stronger arm, but it's like by the time he tries to get it where it needs to be, it's just a little too slow. A little too much time for Paulson and Debo. <laughs> you know what I mean? Jump in front of it. But it's the thing. is The way he reads the field, the way he moves in the pocket, like, he's got he's got raw skill to him for sure. And again, like a lot of people have been saying, I'm hearing it's the narrative. I'm going to ride it too. If you're Tyson, you've got to be seeing yourself. No matter what, at least, dude, I'm going to be in this league for a while. Like, I got me at least back up. Like, teams are going to look at me and say, I can develop him to at least trust him with the backup if worse comes to worse to step in for a couple quarters. For sure. Like, he's definitely at least that guy. In yeah. the NFL. Bajan definitely has a place in the league. He he is definitely, I, I don't want to say the best backup, but he definitely can be one of those guys who can spot start and win you a game. Um, I mean, the Bears offense had an okay day. You mentioned Donta Foreman in your notes. Man. Such an underrated guy. Dude, he's, was, he's angry. I was surprised he wasn't picked up sooner in free agency. Are him and Pacheco related somehow? I don't know. The way they I, run. But realistically, I don't know how you sign Miles Sanders and let him walk. Yeah, you're not lying about that, especially with uh, the that whole offense over there right now. Anyways, but we'll get into that. We'll get into that later. Oh yeah, it's brutal. I mean, Bears traded for Montez Sweat. They had no sacks at all this game. How do you feel about the Saints' offense? Again, I, that's what I was going to get into next. Let's, let's talk about it. Um, and, and we'll start with the the first half defense. Like, the Saints are such an, a weird team, right? Like, again. This is where I don't understand us at all. We were killing the Colts. Dialing up Shahid shots, you know, deep ends over the middle, whatever, whatever. Where did all that go? Like, you guys are out here playing linebackers in the middle of the field, and we just completely forgot the middle of the field exists. And on top of that, we forgot that, we're, that Shahid exists. Take the top off at least once. Your guys, again, I know Eddie Jackson having a better year. And I know, right, you <laughs> get my point. The, the safety situation of any team that I'd want to start targeting over the top, I think the Bears ranked top five. Like, of all teams that we weren't trying to go over the top on, why? Like, there's just, that's the thing that makes the Saints offense so frustrating. 
Oh, and we'll go to the fourth and inches. Where, yeah, okay, we get the first down, we can take more time off the clock, yay. But then, that just adds more risk of fumbling or some stupid shit again. We had the chance to go up two possessions on you guys. Well, again, the D2 rookie quarterback in his third, fourth start. What are we doing? Like, who's calling the shots around here? DA, you don't have enough faith in us to hold a 10-point lead with four minutes left against them? Like, the, the decision-making sometimes around everything that goes into the Saints. And I was saying before, you reminded me, Groupie, our kicker? Is the man, let me double check, is the man still on the roster? Because if the man's still on the roster, what are we doing? What are we doing? Like, look at this shit. Yup, sure enough, still on the roster. Like, Blake, I wish you well, man. Blessings. But for the Saints, you're not consistent enough, and you're not doing your job. Like, what are we doing? The, the inconsistency of this team, if if, if something is going to hurt this team long term and it's it halts us, it's going to be the inconsistency. Every Saints fan knows that there's no doubt because we go from looking – I don't, I'm not going to even compare us to the Bills. We don't deserve that. We don't have those Bills weeks even. We have really good weeks, but not Bills weeks. But in terms of coming to show up one week and then the next week just falling flat, the Saints and the Bills at this point, they're doing handshakes. Like, it's ridiculous, bro. Groupie has missed five field goals so far this year. Um, not something you want when you trade away Will Lutz, who was pretty much automatic. Yeah, and he had he had, he had hit a like a couple rough moments over the years and a couple rough stretches but I had his faith he would come back and he did you know what I mean it's like he got a and he was injured on and off for a long period of time like dealing with that yeah. shit as a kicker I don't know how that is but well also you got to give a shout out to the Saints defense for what they did I mean five turnovers regardless of who it is is a lot I mean I think this game says a lot more about your defense than it does your offense as it always as that's the thing is, as every Saints fan always knew it would for some reason we've had the worst first half defense over the last four weeks, and we still make it work, which is a testament to how much the defense does make it work when they work. It's just like, let's not, uh, let's let this trend stop developing of taking Xanax before the first half of the game, and then having it wean off at the second half, and then we come in ready to kill shit because we're having withdrawals. Like, I mean, I'm trying to, I'm, I wish I was trying to be funny, but it's like the way that the games start, I'm actually convinced they're binging and they're hung over for the first half or something. I mean, it's like, it's to the point where I'm like, what are we doing here? Let's start with some energy, boys. Do you think that's a coaching issue? Because every NOLA fan wants it to be the case. And yes, that's the thing, is I'm like, look, Dennis Allen, I, I go back and forth because it's like, yeah. He has a lot of traits that I like, and he a lot of things about his defense I love, and and th that the consistency of the defense and things along those lines I like. But then it, it's it's a thing about his regime where we don't show up hard enough against a lot of opponents. We don't show up early enough, and I think yeah, it goes back to Da, and it goes back to how he's a more relaxed, he, he's a more reserved dude. I'm like Da, get these dudes ready to kill shit. But enough of my Saints, enough of my Saints fans. Are you know what I'm saying? We need to start showing up early because the Saints just don't show up ready. But they're a talented team that doesn't show up ready. That's the narrative right now.